Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the uh, Talking Chess Rig Armor Combo. Today we are going over the Black Hawk DOAV Chess Rig. This has been a long time coming for this video. If you're curious what's going on here, this is the second channel. The second channel has very limited rules and restrictions, and some say it may even violate the Geneva Convention. Some may say that, not I. But today we are going over this chess rig because one, I like it a lot. I technically probably glanced over it in earlier videos on the main channel, at least a balaclava variant did, and I wanted to talk about it on the second channel. So reason I got this is uh, I'm a big nerd when it comes to the early 2000s to 90s and well I guess 80s, 90s, all that retro era. I love running car 15s like you saw in the beginning and I loved the kit that was going along with that. This was probably part of that transitionary kit era where you're coming from, you know, general infantry guys in the military having Alice to, you know, getting more flicks and stuff like that. Keep in mind, not a big expert on it. I am an enjoyer though. So this is the perspective that I am coming from. I snagged this bad boy because it looked similar to a vest used in Blood Diamond. Yeah, I know I'm a big nerd. I said it before and I'll say it again. Well, one of the characters, Cordell in Blood Diamond looked like he was running this vest. Upon doing more research, I don't think he was running this Black Hawk vest in particular. He was running a rig like this. I'm going on a tangent. Anyway, let's go over this. <laughs> Let's go over the rig, okay? So, test rig as itself is pretty cool. I have it in conjunction with some armor. They are technically the sponsor of this video, and we will roll into that sponsorship right now. Second channel is bonafide now. To no surprise, it quickly got sponsored. We have this sponsor, and they're called Bullet Safe. I'm usually hesitant to have sponsorships with armor and because it's life-saving equipment. So I figured let's give them a shot. I told them if I'm going to have you on the channel, at least the second channel as a sponsor, what we're going to do is we're gonna shoot your armor and see how it does. So this armor is a 3A design, it's rated for 44 Magnum. I have two of these just for the hell of it. We're also gonna shoot with a 762 by 39 round because I know some 3A plus can stop that. Sadly, I do not have a 44 Magnum. Hello darkness, my old friend. But what I do have is a 357 Magnum with a 200 grain projectile. So nice and large. I know, I know, it's not the same, but guys, I don't have a 44 Magnum. If someone has a 44 Magnum and wants to let me um, use it, I'd appreciate that. All right, so to be fair, they do put on the label that it's not rated for rifle threats. We're still gonna shoot it with a rifle anyway, just for the heck of it. And uh, this one's also the bulletproof backpack panel. All right. There we go. Eat ledge, you tally whacker. <laughs> all right, 200 grain projectile does pretty good. Did she catch it? Did she ca- oh, all right. Well, uh, we got our <laughs> entrance. No exit, she caught it. It's just going to hurt like a mofo. All right, cool, it's uh, 357 Magnum got stopped. It worked, it went flying, but it worked. Now let's try an AK just for the heck of it. It's probably gonna go through, but you know, weird tangent science. Thankfully on the second channel, I can get away with this. <laughs> You can't keep getting away with it! All right, we got some 762 by 39, just some ball ammo. Niet, rifle is fine. Oh, I thought I had that one in the bag. Niet, rifle is fine. Maybe I'm not missing, it's just going right through. Yeah, it turns out I didn't miss, okay. Well, it's not rated for 762 by 39, but they said that, so I'll give them that. All right, so let's go over the chest rig yet again. I'm going over this rig because when I YouTubed it, I did not see a lot of people covering this particular rig. And if they did, they did not cover it that well. As a YouTuber, I decided it was up to yours truly to make it happen and make the content that I want to see. So I figured we'd go over this retro little vest. So this is called the Black Hawk DOAV rig or the Delta Operator Assault Vest. That's what it's called. I call it big chonky chest rig. You can call it whatever you want. It came about in the mid 90s to 2000s period and it was this intermediary between, you know, gear becoming more modernized. For what this is, it's actually very impressive for the era, and it still holds up today, in my opinion. I think it's still really cool. I was just telling my cameraman off camera, Colton, that I think that if I was in the world situation, I'd run a slick of some kind with this over because you can always download your chest rig, and then if you need to throw it back on, you can. That sounds like a nice back saver and a fatigue saver, so I like that a lot. And you can always keep your armor on, too, if you need to. This has a lot of pockets, a lot of space, and a lot of storage. Does it load bear? Does it bear the load? <laughs> Mr. Frodo, will you bear the load? The load, the load, the load. 
load. Does it bear the load well? Yes and no, it is definitely antiquated. All your weight is going to be on your front. There is no weight like counterbalancing this out. Definitely want to figure out how to harness it in a little bit better. At least I will definitely want to figure out how to harness it in better if I want to carry this for a long duration of time. On the back, I guess we'll start. So on the back, they made these to be integrated with other like rear packs of different varieties. So you could have a, a pie down low or a, a pack of some kind for the high speed Delta guides that they were. Now I don't have those packs, I'm sorry. So you will not get an example. If you do a little Googling, I may throw a picture in that may pop up on screen. But anyway, moving on. So you have these little tabs right here. These are meant to integrate to a belt. To me, that's some definitely very old school tech, but I kind of like that because it may keep it from flopping around and it may like link up with the weight on your hips and maybe take some of the weight off your hips, which could be nice. Maybe put some more on your shoulders. I have never tried taking these belt loops and hooking them up and using them that way. Main reason why, I just like having the chest rig on. I don't want to worry about hooking up a belt to it. I do like that feature because if you are running one of those older school belts, you can then have your drop leg style pistol holster so you can have your backup weapon a little bit easier. That's all preference thing. If that's how you want to do it, that's how you want to do it. You can see we have the side pouches right here. These are rather nice, large storage side pouches. You can get a lot of space in these bad boys. I like to keep water on me, so I may have two liters on each side. And this rig does great depending on what we're shooting. It may fit the vibe and it also holds a bunch of ammo so I can jam up all my entire loadout, go shoot, and I don't have to worry about like constantly reloading, right? It's the nice filming thing and it actually is applicable to multiple situations. Plenty of space to store whatever you want. They even have some uh, tabs in here that can hold on to stuff of your preference, right? This was an eBay find. This has a bunch of material that's just loose on the inside, like that gritty like fabricness that is um, making it a little bit messy. That's kind of a bummer, but I mean, that's not the rig's fault. It could have been old, could have been exposed to elements, however it was stored. It's a very high quality quality it feels like it's withstanding the test of time and I like that a lot. Let's cover the front. This is arguably, well not arguably, this is where everything is. So this is where all the action happens and this is where the magic happens. We have one, two, three, four, five, six pistol slash accompanying pouches. Then we have our four main cells and these mag pouches are awesome. I like them a lot because they hold whatever the hell you want them to hold. Let me illustrate. I have in far right pouch, three FAL mags. I have in middle pouch, three AKM mags. It's chambered in 762 by 39, which if they can hold those, they can hold the 545 mags. And I have on this left side, three uh, in each pouch, 556 mags. So I was seeing some guys say that they could potentially fit a fourth 556 mag in here. I could see that. I feel like there's enough wiggle. It's right right now. You know what? Even going sideways, you can fit them in. So you can technically fit four mags in these pouches. I'm not going to go vertical with them. Yeah, no, you, that works. Yeah, technically you can fit four mags in there. That is cool. If you were doing just 556 five, mags, you could have 16 mags in just four pouches. That's a screaming deal. Now, a cool thing about all these mag pouches, you'll see they have a retainer clip in here. If you wanna have retention on those mags or whatever other gear you have in here. And it's not like I'm trying to sell you on one of these, it's just more so for entertainment sake because you may be a big gear guy and you may be wondering what's going on with that DOAV rig? What's happening? Well, this is your video to find out. So <laughs> this is where we break it down. So and then you have this front little sliding pocket in front of the uh, retainer. So funny enough, all the four mags fit in front of that pocket. I don't know, Colton, if you can get in here and see, but you can see there is this little lip right here and it has an opening up front. So there is that extra storage, extra divider. So you can maybe put other style of gear in there. I'm sure this thing will fit a plethora of other pieces of kit because these pouches are huge. Massive. I love how much space they cover. They have a nice lockup and seal with the side flaps up top. They're not just these vertical flaps, but they have these sides up here that cover up a good chunk of the magazine. And if you ever crawl through any dirty or grime, probably help keep your mags clean. And I like having clean mags because clean mags are important. Clean mags will help in not dying. We also have these side pockets. I've been stuffing just a random amount of accoutrement in here. Nothing in this particular pocket. Managed to stuff a tourniquet in that pocket. Probably got a multi-tool in this pocket. Oh, this was my mic holder, so nothing in there. Medical kit in this one. I tried fitting a smoke grenade in this pouch, but the Velcro was too short. So that was a bummer. And then we have a pistol pouch, for example. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Whatever you can fit in there, you could stuff it on in there if you get that going. So inside of the vest, 
as we approach the end of all the features inside of the vest. On the rear panel, you have an opening there. It seems like you could stuff some stuff in here. It almost feels like a laundry bag. Two inside pouches where you could stuff whatever your heart desires within reason, of course, and that is pretty much the chest. Rig. So I will give you my biggest critiques on the rig. My thing is, if you have this fully loaded out and you have stuff in your side pockets, getting to your pistol is gonna be annoying. And then there's also those tabs, those uh, clips inside of the mag pouches. They can kind of get in the way when you're doing stuff. You'll see here, they're kind of like tabbing out, or not tabbing out, they're kind of like flinging out. They're kind of all over the place. That's kind of annoying. I think if you just clip them down, maybe you stack them in there proper, it should be fine. And then of course it is older. It's more antiquated technology compared to what we could make today with wanting to carry this much ammo. So there is all that, but for what it is, it is still pretty cool. I know you can maybe find some of these cheaper. This one I paid too much money for because I think it's an M81 God's Plaid. So that's also a downside. I did overpay for that retro tech. And I think some of these may be considered collector's items. So that may be, uh, <laughs> why it's the price marking up, so. Actually, you can see these rigs popping up in early Global War on Terror photos, I believe of guys in Afghanistan. I wanna say they're Green Berets. I could be wrong on that, but it's really cool to see these vests of when they came out, because if they came out, you know, mid 90s, guess what? I'm gonna make you feel old. I was born in 96, so. If they came out, you know, 95, technically this chest rigger is older than I am. You are an old man if you're older than that. You still have this capable fighting rig. I think, of course, there is better stuff today. I think, you know, a lot of vintage tech, a lot of vintage chest rigs when in use in conjunction with body armor have some merit. And I think this is one of the cases. That again goes back to being just one man's opinion. So take everything I do and say with a grain of salt. <laughs> there is that, there is a caveat, there is a disclaimer. Yet again, I do like this chest rig. I think it is a whole ass vibe and I enjoy showing it off to you guys. Gentlemen, I've rambled on enough. I have schizoed out. I have made my Black Hawk chest rig video and I am now happy. So thank you for um, you know getting into the weeds with me because the second channel is a perfect place for us to do this. Guys, thanks for watching as always. Support the channel, merchandise, Patreon. Stay easy, stay breezy. I'll catch you guys on the flip.